Fenway Park. I can see it from my hotel room. The show in Boston was great last night, and now we're headed over to Washington, D.C., and I'm gonna show you some of the techniques that I use when I'm doing lighting. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. Nancy. Nailed it. Nailed it. Hey, everyone. Little fingers up. Thank you, <laughs> I'm 24 Charlotte. 18 Fox Charlotte. So this is what it's like. Oh, this is how the one percent looks like. Enjoy your 45 minutes. Okay. So far we're 0 for 3. Is that yeah. on promoters reading the advance? <laughs> no, tech packets from 2014. Tech packets from 2013. Actually. <laughs> That's why I need tattoos on my left on my left arm so that I can be like boom boom boom. Don't record me. <laughs> this is illegal. You can't record me in public. Great B-roll. So meta right now. Listen, what? We can't both be walking backwards. Okay? Yeah, Someone we obviously me. can. Our nation's capital. Get the shit. No. <laughs> Pop up. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'll get this side, get that side. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Wow. Yes. Tour life is uh, not so bad. I really do think I could get used to this lifestyle. This is sweet. We are at Echo Stage in Washington, D.C. This might be the coolest show of the tour. I'm not. I'm not gonna say just yet, but I'm pretty confident. So this is our add-on ground package. Six pointies, six atomics, some color forces and stuff. It's the huge. All really good shit, five hour extremes. This is gonna be sweet. Here we are at front of house at Echo Stage. And basically what I'm gonna do after Logan finishes flying his Mavic Pro, I'm gonna get one of those. Excuse me, sir, do you have a permit for that? So I'm just going through here and taking my old fixture uh, or my old show from the last show and just patching these over top and replacing and cloning and doing all that stuff. And then, you know, theoretically the show should just kind of operate as all the other ones have. Oh yeah. Uh, Mavic 6 9 are you for takeoff? Not yet, I'm not. Hang on. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I can go that. from the drone live on Facebook. Oh God, God. Is fun. What year do we live in? This is crazy. Know, <laughs> hey, you go. Thanks. Hi. Thank you. Good. How are you? Going up. Going up. I had to take a quick shower real quick. I was feeling so gross, but. The show is just about to start and I have to head back to Echo Stage to finish a little bit of programming. Let's go. Now this is the part where I'm gonna switch over into commentary mode. When I'm actually running the show, I just don't have the time to explain what I'm doing. So I decided to take a little bit of a different approach and tell you after the fact. The most important part of lighting is being able to match the emotions going on stage with what you can do with your lights. And a good lighting operator should be able to work with any rig. In this case, we were super lucky because the rig in Echo Stage was phenomenal. That gives me a chance to explain, in a best case scenario, how I like to plan out my lighting. I'll just run through a few techniques that I use. The most important part for me is being able to hide from the audience what you're going to do when the next transition of energy happens. Whether that's from a drop to a breakdown, an intro to uh, drums, or something else. So it's especially critical to be able to surprise those people and give them something a little extra that maybe they weren't expecting at the show. Believe it or not, I actually use some principles of magic when I'm thinking about my shows, specifically the art of misdirection. Probably my most classic example of this is during a buildup when I have you know, eight or 16 bars of time to build the energy, I will take out a certain selection of lights by dimming them down to zero with my faders and then selecting a new fresh position and color for those specific lights.
while I'm doing that, I'm distracting them with another set of lights, usually either atomic strobes or whatever fixture is on stage and focus at the DJ. In this example, you can see I'm using both the pointies I have on stage and the strobes I have to create a distraction for the main drop. I was beyond excited when I heard that I was going to be doing lights for a Matt Zoe and Juni Beats classic set. That whole style was what originally got me into lighting in the first place. And in fact, I'm going to link to you the video that I saw on YouTube originally that made me want to decide to actually do concert lighting. So that's actually going to be the link down, uh, the first link down in the description below. For the Matt Zoe set, I was fortunate enough to get all of his old visual packs from the old and Juni Beats days. So half of the work was really done for me. All the color palettes had been pretty much picked out because I want to be complementary with whatever the visuals on the screen are. And then from there, it's just being really attentive because Matt is a very talented DJ and he can go in any sort of direction at any time. But keep in mind, you don't have to do everything in blind or you don't have to always hide what you're doing from the audience. Sometimes that can be a tool in itself to create or dissipate energy. Perfect example of this is I'll be in a really crazy section of a track and I'll have everything white and strobing and I will sense that there will be a big release of energy, a breakdown coming up and instead of you know turning some lights off and then changing them in the dark, I will leave them all up and then as soon as the breakdown hits, change to a very deep, very emotive color of whatever I predict is going to be uh, in the breakdown. And sometimes I get it right and sometimes I get it wrong. Most of the time I get it right. I did a little bit different of a style of video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have any feedback or have any other specific things you want to know. This is probably how I'm going to be doing videos going forward. It allows me to be a little bit more educational after the fact, and that's really what I'm aiming to do with this channel. So please, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and check out the other videos on my channel. And if you want to get in touch with me, honestly, the easiest way is through my Twitter account. All my social media stuff is linked down below, and you can see all the shows I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis without having to wait for the videos to get uploaded. I have a lot of big projects coming up, like a lot. 2017 is crazy, and I would love for you guys to watch it as it happens. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.